What's going on filmmakers? I'm Alexander Don and today we're gonna do a highly requested comparison between the Ronin 4D and Sony FX6. This comparison seems quite fair because we have two cameras that are priced quite similar. Now, we also have two similar lenses. On the DJI Ronin 4D, we have the 17 to 28 f2.8. This is their new flagship lens. And here we have the 16 to 35 with a 2.8 from Sony. This is a lens that I love and use quite a lot. Now, when it comes to specs, there's a quite big difference between those two cameras. The, this is a 6K camera, but this is a 4K camera. Now, the Sony FX6 has more frame rate options in terms of how it shoots slow motion. It doesn't crop on the sensor whenever you shoot 4K 120. On the other side, this one has 4K 120 as well, but it crops on the sensor. From the 6K sensor, you have to go down to a 4K sensor in order to get that 4K 120p, which is a downside. But we have an upside, the fact that this camera has a four axis gimbal and this one doesn't. So it all depends on what you wanna do with the camera. Now, a lot of you think about the Ronin 4D that it's only a gimbal camera. It's not really, you can also use this camera on a tripod, you can also use this camera handheld and so on, but you will always be limited on what lenses you can put on this camera. Even though you can put some rails and you can have lens support and so on, there is still a little bit of limitations. Now with the Sony FX6, you're a little bit more versatile when it comes to what you can do with the camera. You can put this camera on a gimbal, you can take it out of a gimbal. There's not so many moving parts and so on. But like I said, these two cameras, even though they look quite similar when you see them on the table, they are quite different in terms of what they can do and what they are best at. Also, when it comes to built-in NDs, they both have incredible built-in NDs and also they both have amazing recording formats. This one records ProRes and also RAW. This one records only AVCS and I and all that stuff, but it's a really good codec and it's more efficient than the ProRes. The ProRes takes up a lot of space. This one doesn't take that much. So again, we're looking at two different worlds when with this one, you're gonna need more space. With this one, you're fine with just a few terabytes. Now, I'm not gonna try to go more into details because there's clearly a big difference when it comes to these cameras. There's also a bigger monitor on the Ronin 4D. There's a small monitor here. So there's a lot of pluses and minuses between those two cameras. So it will be really hard to pick one based only on a few criterias. Now, where I want to make your life easier, like I said, is just judge these two cameras based on their image and which image you think it's better, I think that's the camera you should go for. So, let's put these cameras side by side. We're gonna start here in the studio first with a few shots and then we're gonna go outside, check out some textures and see exactly how these cameras perform in different kind of situations like uh, high ISO and so on. Let's begin.
right, all right. Let me know what you think about these two cameras based on the footage you just watched. Which one is your favorite? Let me know down in the comments below. Now I'm gonna share with you my personal opinion about the footage I watched and what I like and don't like. I'm gonna start with dynamic range. Now both cameras have incredible dynamic range. It's really good. They hold up really, really good in terms of highlights. As you can see from the test we just did, both of them look really similar when we bump up the intensity of the light. They don't break until the last point, which is quite amazing. Now, I do think Sony FX6 is slightly a little bit better when it comes to dynamic range, and that is mostly because it has cleaner lock footage. When I look at the lock footage, I can see there's a little bit of noise in the running for the image and on the fx6 it looks much cleaner although the difference is so small that i don't really i think it's a draw at this point but when we look at sony fx6 in terms of claimed dynamic range on sony website they say it's 15 stops and on the ronin 4d they say it's 14 stops so Here's that as well. Now, what I want to talk about is color accuracy. Now, this one is really interesting. So, before I talk about color accuracy, I also want to talk about the fact that I have like four or five years experience with Sony cameras. I know exactly what the camera likes and doesn't like in terms of codec, uh, color limitations, and all that. I know exactly how to grade this camera to make it look amazing. Now with the Ronin 4D, I only have a few days of experience. So I might be a little bit biased here, but I think in terms of color accuracy, the Ronin 4D is a little bit better than Sony FX6. And let me explain why. As you can see, when we look at the skin tone, Chipri on the Ronin 4D, you can see a little bit of red marks and all that. That is a direct representation on how it looked in real life. Now Sony FX6 has it neutralizes the reds a little bit so when you look at a skin tone I think it looks better on the Sony FX6 than on the Ronin 4D but when it comes to accuracy it's more accurate on the Ronin 4D than on the FX6 so it's just a matter of preference and taste now what I want to talk about which was really impressive was the low light test now here I was quite mind blown because I was at ISO 12800 on the Sony FX6 and I was at ISO 5000 on the Ronin 4D. Yet both of the images looked pretty similar in terms of exposure, which in my opinion is really impressive because it shows that the Ronin 4D sensor might be a little bit more sensitive to light than the Sony FX6. Now what I think is really impressive for the DJI Ronin 4D is the fact that this camera is their first ever professional camera they launched. To me, that is very impressive. Imagine what DJI will do in a couple of years where they gain more experience and more experience. We might see a shift in cinematography if they continue to push boundaries like this. Like imagine Sony is in the business for so many years. They make amazing cameras and now DJI has come up into the scene of cinematography and makes this crazy camera that is literally mind-blowing for being their first ever camera now i think these two cameras can work together perfectly you can color grade them in a way that they look pretty similar it might be a slightly small difference but with more experience color grading the ronin 4d you can get that dialed in and to be honest i'm really impressed with this camera um, I want to do more footage with it so you better subscribe and stay tuned because I'm gonna take this camera for a spin and I'm gonna try to make a more cinematic video I'm gonna try to put Sony lenses on it I have the Sony mount as well for it so I'm gonna try my best to utilize this camera and put it to the ultimate test to see how good it is but so far I'm really impressed I really like the camera I really like the colors so uh, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this comparison. I try to be as honest as possible when it comes to both of these cameras and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it and probably it will help you make a decision based on what's better for you. It's really hard. It, I think it's only a taste of preference, what brand you like more and what brand makes you feel more motivated to film. So yeah. <laughs> 
hopefully this helped <laughs> cheers